Bine ați venit la emisiunea Față în Față. Suntem onorați să fim din nou în casele dumneavoastră și să vă aducem din nou o emisiune specială. Astăzi, împreună cu mine, se află un mare evanghelist din India, Dr. P.P. Job. Este un om ale Dumnezeu folosit de-a lungul anilor, de peste 33 de ani, slujind alături de Richard Wumbrand și în India orfanii cei mai neînsemnați copilași din această țară, India. Va trebui să îmi cer scuze pentru cei care nu înțelegeți limba engleză, deoarece Dr. P.P. Job nu vorbește limba română și uh, mă voi strădui să întrețin un dialog în limba engleză. Vă mulțumesc pentru găduință și acum vă prezint pe Dr. P.P. Job. Welcome to the program, Dr. P.P. Job. Thank you very much. Thank It's so you. nice to see you. I am also very happy to be here again. Once to, this is my third visit. It's uh, it's always an honor to have you uh, with us and uh, I wanted to uh, do a special uh, today and talk about uh, your experience as a evangelist as a worker of the kingdom. You've been involved in many many projects. You're running an orphanage uh, in India, a hospital, a printing press, so many things. But before we get into the the details about your present activities, I'd like to ask you how you started this whole ministry. When did it all begin? See, I was uh, a preacher from my childhood. My mother was a strong believer and preacher. So she brought up like that. I remember I became a preacher when I was three years old. I used to collect uh, children around my house and bring them when their parents go to work bring them and ask them to sit one by one then i preach to them then i stand up uh, for a, a on a table small table a tipoiga we call it and shake it tipoiga and then i tie with a stick that is my microphone stand <laughs> then i put a tomato as microphone then somebody came while i was preaching means another two year old I pulled the stage the <laughs> dais i fell down and i broke my left hand uh oh then i became tortured for christ <laughs> from from the early beginning you yes, been tortured yes. for christ uh, that time there was no bandage system allopathy system we had ayurvedic system means somebody will come and pull this hand and fix it so the i run i still remember when i see the doctor the one who fix it i always run here and there then finally they they catch me and put me on a corner of the room why that is a technique i cannot go anywhere then he will slowly slowly we pull it and fix just to pull it suddenly i see heaven that time <laughs> <laughs> that was painful i can imagine yes. um so i became torture for christ when i was 3 years old i was preacher when i was 3 years old So you then when I got up, when I passed a 10th grade in school I started preaching on the street I liked it in India that's yes. unusual India yes. is not a christian country most uh, yes. of the people have uh, I think a hindu, hindu background hindu. so I stood up on the street with the bible my mother's old bible I am student I am a student of 10th grade five six people gather I preach Uh, during my preaching one will go two will go th- the third will go finally one or sometime nobody will be there so still i will preach louder there is no microphone or anything so some people who are walking here and there get little bit then i realize i should not preach uh, one sermon uh, every sentence should be a sermon because they hear only one sentence so i started preaching using the bible There is no salvation except Jesus Christ. That is the whole preaching. <laughs> like that I started. Then it took another 30 years to come to city of Bombay. In Mumbai, I had 500,000 people. We've uh, seen that video. It's very, very uh, acres uh, powerful. Of land. Mm. The, news, the news in the front page of Times of India was that here is a magician from New Delhi holding people on the floor. No chairs. <laughs> And in the rain I saw all the people with the umbrellas <laughs> that is another place yeah they n- they did not go weren't they you scared there. weren't you scared to do that on the streets of India were, were wasn't that dangerous I am not uh, I am not uh, scared that is why I lost my two children 
I am not scared. That is why I lost my two children. I stood up in front of Indian Parliament in New Delhi and preached a sermon for half an hour. That made the, the Hindu fanatics to go and kill my youngest son, Michael. We have to uh, 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 mention for those that don't know your story. You had mm. two sons. Yes, Michael and John and Michael. Uh, John was the eldest. eldest. Yes, and John, you might have seen. I have not. Uh -huh. I have not. Then I did not have the opportunity to meet uh, any of your sons, but yeah. I read the books and I know yeah. the tragic, tragic yeah. uh, stories. All tragic, tragic. Very young men, very this handsome and book. smart men, and yeah, they, they both lost their lives because yes. they preached the gospel. They lost because of their father is a preacher and because inspired of them. Fire the and uh, John was inspired by Richard Wombrand. John, John knew Richard Wombrand. You know, I am working in the mission. When John was small, Richard Umran used to come and stay in my home. So there I used to talk. You know, Umran like children. So my son, we all we have different language, but in my home we speak English. So Umran and John used to speak. Very interesting stories. And John uh, was a little dark when you compare uh, Michael. And John one day said, Uncle Wombran, send me to America. Send my brother to Africa. <laughs> he said, why? What? A small boy is telling about Africa and America. Mm -hmm. No, I am little dark. When I, when I am sent to America, I will be white. <laughs> when my, my brother is sent to Africa, he is very white. Now he will be little dark. <laughs> so how John knew Africa and America? That was the amazing thing for Wombran. You mentioned Richard Wombrand. How did you meet uh, Richard Wombrand? In 1969, I was showing Christian movie along with the, uh, the moon movie. Americans had gone to moon. And the American embassy in India released a, a movie uh, going to the moon. So I got a copy of it because they want to publish it. So I took these two uh, my meetings. See, uh, uh, the, my whole strategy in my life, how to gather people. So, movie is the one people like to see that time. So, I had uh, one or two films of uh, Jesus Christ and uh, the Moody Institute had published some scientific film from mm -hmm. Chicago, Moody Institute. Right. So, I got five films from Moody and uh, one film from American Embassy. Then, one of the Christian missionaries gave me a uh, Life of Jesus Christ. So I was showing it everywhere. And one uh, American from California settled down in Japan, Tokyo, for missionary work, came to India to arrange meetings, to preach in meetings. I did not know him. So I was showing this movie in my own home village, in the YMCA ground. There were 5,000, 6,000 people. Wow. Now, people never got together like this because of the power of the movie. Not, uh, they did not know me, but they know I am from that village and preaching on the street and all those things. So this missionary was conducting another meeting. He had only 10 people, 20 people. So he inquired, what happened? Usually 300, 500 people used to attend. Then he cancelled his meeting. He came and see the five, six thousand stadium is packed. What is the magic? So he came to my home uh, in my village. This has happened in my own place. So he said, I you should come to India to preach more people. And I don't want to preach 10 people, 20 people. <laughs> so I he can cancel, he told me he can cancel his meeting and join with me. So I said, okay, five minutes, I will give you five minutes. Trans with translation, ten minutes. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, what he did, he came for my meeting, next seven meetings together, you know, every day somewhere. So after that, when he was going to the airport, he told me he used to give hundred dollar those who arrange his meetings. So he preached seven meetings in my seven meetings. So he wrote a check of seven hundred dollars, and he gave it to me. Mm -hmm. I did not take. I said I am supported by these people. 
I don't want your money. So he said, you are the first Indian who refused the American dollar. <laughs> okay, I have money, why should I take your money? So he gave me a watch, that time it had an alarm. So he told me it may need, need to, use, to be used when I travel in the train. So I took it. When he went to Tokyo, that was in April 1969. When he went to Tokyo, Boomerang was preaching there in Tokyo. So he knew Boomerang in California. So he went to, for his meeting. After the meeting, he said, hello, I was in India and all. And Boomerang said, I want to start a ministry in India. And he said, I will give you a young man. I was only 24 years old. And uh, what is his qualification? He attracts people. And uh, people come like flies on sugar. <laughs> and then what? Hey, I gave $700 he did not take. <laughs> Umran said, I want him because I am a, he is a Jew. You know? Jews <laughs> never spend money. <laughs> he just likes to keep, not to give. <laughs> ah. So he immediately contacted me from Tokyo. So he asked me how much money you want. I said, I don't need any money. So he said, if you don't want money, immediately you are appointed. <laughs> <laughs> you qualify. <laughs> yes. So I started his work, not with money. I am a mass puller. From that time, this missionary, his name is Kenny Joseph. Kenny Joseph. And uh, if you read my book, his master's job, it is published in Romanian language. It is available in Bucharest uh, Umran's book center, St. Stephen book center. And in that book, I have written how I met Umran. Then I arranged a big meeting for Umran in New Delhi. That was fantastic. And then we started together working in Eastern European countries and Africa. And After you met Richard Umran, what impressed you the most about this man, about this family, about his work? See, he suffered. Suffering brings Christian faith strong. And I have seen him uh, as a strong Christian brother in all circumstances. I was so close to him. And I took him to Saudi Arabia, took him to Gulf countries, Kuwait, Yemen, Bahrain, Oman, all these places and several places in Asia. And I was with him. His heart is bubbling for evangelism. Even though he supported and uh, he preached about persecution, his whole aim was not uh, propagating uh, for the persecuted Christians. His whole aim was winning the soul. Winning the soul. That he liked in me and I liked in him. See, you and uh, I will have a calling. Like Umbran had a calling to start a voice of martyrs, supporting the persecuted Christians. But that is only a professional side. But spontaneously, his idea is, everyone who believes in Christ is a soul winner. So, whatever he preaches, whomever he sees, the whole idea is to bring that person or those people to Christ. One day I asked him, what should I preach? Hey, he told me, Job, you should think this is your last preaching. And I also should think the one who listens to me is hearing only last time in his life. You may die, both may die. Then how do I preach? If I have only one chance to preach to the man who is going to die next minute or next hour, what should I do? Say about uh, saving power to reach to the kingdom of God. So that was the powerful message I have grasped from his life. You worked with, uh, with Richard Wombrand for a long years. time. 33, 30, 33 years. And uh, what ama what's amazing is you were the president of his uh, organization. Yeah, uh, the reason is he, was, he worked uh, in uh, America uh, with a man called Boss. Boss. 
he started a under a mission called underground church then he was given a 2000 dollars salary he has to live with his wife and michael and all 2000 salary it is in 69 68 that time he has not started the today's voice of martyrs or this mission then he find out found out he collects money only 10 percentage he will send to the persecuted christians 90 percentage he spends for administration car uh, building heating all these things so he left he resigned then he started in california itself jesus to the communist world a organization then he found out even his own son cannot manage as he wishes because the american organization spends 70 percentage to 80 percentage for administration and I only 10 not... to 20 percent for the actual cost ah, i am not against america no is not it is not possible i can understand so he asked me when he asked me i thought the first one is to start a printing press in india very cheap One dollar, forty books. In America, one dollar you will get only one book or hardly two copies. This was back then. Yes. So I started a printing press, Sabina Printing Press, in the name of his wife. Is it still the largest printing press yes, in India? Yes, in India. Then he asked me, "Do you want money?" I said, "No." Why? Because we can get a loan from government. to start small scale industry so i started sabina printing press with a loan of government of india then how do i survive i said whatever you give in america you give me half of that i will do whatever you want so the whole literature he wanted i printed in a in the peanut price so what he understood i can do administrative work for 10 percentage and 90 percentage can be sent to persecuted christians this was a big discovery in his life and in my life also <laughs> i have never thought about it's it it's amazing how were you so able i appointed yeah. 180 workers in india 180 workers working all the 24 hours printing press office packing post office all these things and we don't have any car or vehicle we take a bullock cart and send it to the post office when it goes to america africa europe same book quality we controlled and what is the salary you give 100 uh, uh, 50 is was the salary 50 dollar in america it will be 3000 dollars Wow. So he has seen evangelism should be administered not from Europe, not from America, but from Asia. That was his discovery. He is a Jew. He wants money. He doesn't. He he could did not raise money. How did the people from the United States who were involved in the ministry at that time? accept this yeah, change it was, it was not easy i don't think <laughs> i know because uh, it affected their employment because uh, i was uh, a thorn in their uh, life because wombrand was a lion, giant giant means he in in height also he was a giant 6 feet in uh, weight also like that and sound also so that is his mission he said it should be done okay it should be done I was uh, you know I was feeling very bad you know everybody will have a chance to hate me that is why I left uh, voice of martyrs when umran died because umran died no chance for me to survive in this mission with uh, americans and europeans and all australians all because they all uh, was against me in their mind it is not their fault i am showing another world Do you Still, feel responsible at all? Pardon? Do you feel responsible yes, at all? Yes, I am responsible. But then uh, I also felt uh, these people are uh, 
becoming like a lion against me so when he died i resigned i was the there at the funeral i in myself i told michael his son i am leaving i did my work 33 years i was faithful to your father now goodbye your work continued even beyond uh, the how i am doing the work and you're doing i am not uh, with the mission i am doing, doing the same work you the publication great. i started in 69 still it is named tortured for christ and in india i am known as a boomerang man anybody starts another mission they will not recognize only they will recognize me because they knew what a relationship i had with richard boomerang even in romania i was in arad oradia bucharest many times what about uh, your uh, relationship with uh, michael the son Re- michael yes, boomerang uh, you still he now he's old man he's old man now i writes he writes back he's an old man now yeah he is already 75 not a young man yeah. i am 66 oh so you're younger <laughs> i'm younger wow there is the uh, a lot to, to talk about the, the past you've been involved in, in evangelism you you've been preaching uh, to thousands of people in and big uh, 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 stadiums and, and open fields even yes in india are you still doing that today yes yes you still involved see wombrand heart was bubbling for soul winning that is the secret of it he was he was known as a voice of martyrs he was uh, known as the saint paul of uh, iron curtain churches but that all you can say it is a calling but he always believed everyone who is doing something for christ should have the basic qualification of winning souls that's great that's wonderful uh well uh we'll uh, we'll have to take a short break and then we'll come back and talk about your present work your okay. current activities you've you're involved in many many things and one of them is that uh girls orphanage over 580 girls uh, you're 541 41 541 okay we'll be back and uh, and talk about uh, your current work and the ministries you're doing in india you're involved in many things we'll be right back vom reveni vom reveni după această scurtă pauză Community Optical Center este o ramură a misiunii International Missions Alliance. Pentru examinare optică de doctor cu o vastă experiență în domeniu, sunați la 773-486-7661. Avem o gamă extraordinară de ochelari de cea mai bună calitate, la un preț deosebit de scăzut. Pentru informații și programări ne puteți contacta la 773-486-7661. Mă numesc Alexandru Trombitaș, sunt pastorul bisericii Golgota din Oclaun, Illinois. Am privilegiul și bucuria în același timp să vă invit să urmăriți o nouă emisiune pe care am intitulat-o Pași în Necunoscut. Nu este altceva decât o călătorie prin cartea psalmilor. De deci aceea vă invit să fiți alături de noi în această călătorie inedită și să învățăm împreună din viața practică a omului obișnuit și a marilor oameni ale Dumnezeu în general. Am revenit în studio, împreună cu mine se află Dr. P.P. Job din India, un mare evanghelist și un om al lui Dumnezeu. Welcome back to the program. Um, we've been talking a little bit about your past. Your background is so rich and you got so much to say. Uh, and unfortunately, we have only one hour uh, during this program. So I want to touch a little bit about your present ministry and also about your future, about your goals. Uh, in this segment, I'd like to talk a little bit about your current ministry you're involved in uh, one of the i think is the biggest orphanage girl orphanage in india and also involved in in in, in a medical ministry uh, you you mentioned already the printing press 
publishing. Uh, tell us about this orphanage. How did it all begin? What caused you to start this work? See, I did not want to begin an orphanage because I and my wife both reached to a conclusion. If we start an orphanage, we should have started when we are young, not when we are old. So we were reluctant uh, to start an orphanage. But then one man in uh, Netherlands had a vision to start an orphanage. So he sold his house and came to Delhi. At the same time, one of my relatives told he will give, he had a vision to give a piece of land for orphanage. So I, like a pastor, arranging a wedding, you know, organized the bride and bridegroom. I told them, I have no time. I have a lot of work to do all over the world with Richard Wombrand. I They have my blessing and I gave them to run. But the first, they had a fight each other. And finally, they both left. I don't know what I should do. Such a time, Michael was martyred. Then I thought, in the name of Michael, I will do something there. And I collected 31 girls from all over India, children of Christian martyrs. But then why did I take only girls? Girls are not wanted in India. 50 million girls are missing every year every from year? Indian population. Wow. I have the record here. All the records. 50 million. So I thought I should do something. My wife is a gynecologist. She told me 5 million abortion takes place only in government hospitals on the basis of gender. Means they take ultrasound. If the family knows the a child is a girl, then they will immediately abort. Why, I, why is Here, that? Here uh, you can see there is a doctor who conceived uh, two twins. And this doctor was asked by husband and in-laws to abort. She did not abort. Then she was sent out from the home. She went straight away to the court. The, she is in the court now fighting. So, she, because of the dowry, the marriage system is not like America, uh, a girl finding a boy or boy finding a girl. Two families are getting married together. That is why we don't have divorces. We have a difference of opinion between a husband and wife. Two parents and their families will come together, counsel them and mediate. That is why uh, in uh, India, marriage divorces are not taking place like America, Europe. So you should see this is the situation where they also ask money. The girls' parents have to give money to boys. Actually, it is not a dowry. It is a girl's portion from girl's home to be given during the marriage time. But then there is a bargain. Suppose I want to get a good bridegroom for my daughter. I offer more than my capacity. Then I fail to give. Mm -hmm. Then fight begins. Mm. So it's a business. Mm -hmm. the fault is there in the in the culture. Mm -hmm. So because of that, parents when they get one or two girls, they are frustrated. So they kill the girls. So 50 million girl children are missing every year from Indian population. So mm. I thought I will stand for girl children and especially Christian martyrs children. So we have orphan girls, Christian martyrs uh, girls, persecuted Christians girl and uh, girls who are not wandered, thrown out. Now we have taken 50 
eight girls from different parts of India as a Christmas gift. Christmas gift. Mm. Fifty-eight girls who are not wanted. Can you imagine? If you want to take newborn, you will get uh, at least uh, hundred a, a day. Hundred a day. A day. Wow. I don't have facilities and uh, to look after these small children it is very difficult. What then are the ages uh, of the kids? We have two children? to twenty-one. Two to twenty-one <laughs> at present children, because this is a unique orphanage. I am not just giving good food, good good clothing, and uh, good shoes and tie everything. I am also giving them an opportunity to be educated, especially in higher education. So I have established a school, higher secondary school, so that they can study from kindergarten to 12th grade. Then arts and science college with 23 discipline. They can pass, take graduation degree. Then post-graduation, we have five discipline. Or they want to become a lecturer, professor, educationer, educationist. I have established another college, Michael Job College of Education for women. So they can study a Bachelor of Education, Master of Education and Doctorate of Education. Wow, so there amazing. will not be any orphanage with two colleges and schools anywhere in the world. Soon it will be declared by government of India as Michael Job University. I happen to visit the facilities over there, and I've been there, and I uh, have to uh, testify that it's 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 a miracle what I've seen over there. You've got this orphanage, but in fact you have a whole campus, you have a university, you have schools, uh, you have uh, different uh, activities going on over there. And my understanding is that you also. Uh, receive students from outside yes. the orphanage. It's not just the, the, the girls that uh, are in your orphanage. Yes. And I guess the, the question is, how do you survive? That's a lot of expense. See, I collect some money from rich families. There is one benefit. Since the orphan children are from all over India, they cannot speak their language to as a common language. India has 30 states based on 30 languages. So our children, one cannot speak to other child. So English is our medium. So when our children are speaking English, when I invite other outsiders, the rich family bring their children. Why? They can pick up English very fast. In India, every state is emphasizing their own vernacular language. Here is a place we are em where we are emphasizing only English. So, even today, uh, we have 541, but 300 already gone and employed. When they pass 10th grade, they are the good speakers, they are preachers, they are good writers, orators, and like that. Because every day morning, 5 o'clock, they have to get up, like military. 5.30, they are in the chapel. 6.30, they are in the stadium. Seven, they take a shower and wash their face. Eight o'clock breakfast. Nine o'clock, they are in the school or college. And 12.30 lunch. Again, they are back in the school or colleges. Then, six o'clock dinner. Seven to nine, study hours, compulsory. They cannot move left or right. Strict discipline. Now, the university of the state belongs to the government of India. And we have the college, we are running the college, but the degree is given by university. And our children are getting, all of them, all of them are getting about 80 percentage distinction. So the vice chancellor asked me, what is the secret of it? Are they copying? I said, they cannot copy because police is standing when they are writing examination. But they are doing hard work. They are compelled to work. They are compelled to study. And the teachers are also like that. I have told the teachers, if one girl gets above 90 percentage, the teacher is rewarded. Rewarded. Give money, special money is given. So every teacher is responsible 
about each and every child. How many people work for the campus? 138 people are working. 138 are working over there. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Uh, what about the, the printing press or the... Printing press is in North. See, uh, I am in New Delhi. New Delhi is the capital of India. The distance is like you fly from New York to Los Angeles. Three hours flight. Wow. If you get in a small plane, five hours. But direct fast air bus, three and a half, like that. So it is not easy to run an orphanage in south, sitting in north. But all by God's grace, I am able to run it because faithful workers dedicated workers with again less salary the motto is serve the god serve god and uh, they all are inside the campus so we give free food free accommodation and uh, their children are educated and whatever salary we give they can straight away deposit in the bank no other expense that is the secret of it it's amazing. I mean, that's, that, it's beneficial for them as well yeah. if, that's, uh, if it's provided some of these benefits. Uh, yeah. This is like a city. You don't go outside, so no need of paying money for uh, car, petrol, gas, or electricity, water, medicine, everything we look after. We look after them. So whatever they get is like a pocket money. You take it and straight away put it in the bank. So they earn more money than those who get $1,000. $1,000 in a month, that is a, a India's average salary, but they don't have any balance. But our teacher staff have much more balance to put it in the bank. What else is going on? What, what, what other ministries you're involved in? You have a, a Christian min Medical Center. The Christian Medical where, Center. Where uh, slum people in New Delhi uh, cannot get uh, medicine and uh, treatment in uh, hospitals. Because few government hospitals, the rest, majority are private hospitals. To see a doctor is very difficult. So my wife worked 10 years in government service another uh, few years with Mother Teresa. So we thought to start a medical center to help uh, poor people. So we started it in 1985. And uh, my wife, who knew other doctors, started collecting free medicine from other doctors. They get sample medicines and we give it free. And we have only three cabin for uh, three doctors, one small operation theater, one lab, and one medical the uh, pharmacy center. Do you get any outside help, any no, financial no, help? Nobody from? so far has given. We have not asked, we have not propagated, but those who are coming there sometimes when they see what Mary is doing, my wife is doing, sometimes they give $50 or $100, okay, we are not worried. But we say the medicine we collect from, sample medicine from uh, pharmacies and The so doctors many. are volunteers? The doctors? Yeah. Yes, doctors are volunteers. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, and how, how is the printing press going? You have a lot, printing of, a lot press, of printing? Uh, going we on? started it uh, with the uh, Wumran's books and the government of India's parliament books. You know, in parliament, they have a debate every day, question and answer. Then the, within two days, that debate should be published as a book and given to the member of parliaments. So that was a hard work, time-based work. You cannot say there is no electricity, uh, the workers who are not there, holy, there is no holiday. So I took that challenge for Indian parliament and printed their books every day. Every day? Yeah. I made money because they, they need it on time. They are not bothered about money. So that was my good income. In the You're a good businessman too. Not just a good evangelist, but a good businessman. No, but hard work, you know. I was the proofreader. Not only oh, really? preacher, oh. proofreader. 
When do you have time to preach? You still go on uh, yes. uh, an evangelistic yes. uh, campaign? As Umran uh, taught me, whatever I do, whether I am doing printing or running an orphanage or a publication house or medical center, my heart is for winning souls for Jesus Christ. Why is that? What's, what's giving you that passion or that conviction that you need to do that? You could Because make a lot of money with all these uh, activities in medical field, in the printing field. Money is nothing. Money, God gives. Money, for money we should not work. That is my idea. See, I have one stomach. I can eat little food only. And five dollar, ten dollar is sufficient for that. And uh, that is not a big problem. And if we are not w winning the souls for Jesus Christ, they will go to hell for eternity. They, don't be, they will not be there in the eternity. So that is why our time should be utilized to win souls. We don't need to go to preach like I preach to 500,000, 200,000, 300,000. You can say this bubbling heart, you can share the bubbling heart for Jesus Christ. Whenever you meet somebody, you don't need to preach. You talk to them. This spirit of Jesus Christ spontaneously will be spread to the other people. So it, it is like a contagious sickness. I always say, we don't need to force Uh, to believe in Jesus Christ. This is, you know, when you have cold and cough, you meet somebody and talk a few minutes. That person will start uh, having little symptom of cold. So like this cold, contagiously, a contagious sickness spontaneously will be spread out. That is the gospel. That's amazing. And that's the way it works. The gospel comes naturally. It doesn't come forced upon forced. anybody. Huh. I have a, a question. We're here in Chicago and uh, your, uh, uh, your entire uh, board from, uh, from your ministry from the United States is meeting here in Chicago. Yes. Tell us a little bit about uh, your visit to Chicago. And also, I'd like to ask you, what is your greatest challenge today? What is the, the greatest problems you're facing? See, there is no problem. Problems are everywhere. There is no greatest challenge or anything. We are in God's hands. So there, the problem will be everywhere, in every family, in every organization. We should not wait for problem or try to solve the problem. We should stand for Jesus Christ, winning souls for Jesus Christ. See, I am sitting here uh, in Chicago where D.L. Modi preached the gospel. A contagious gospel spontaneously he spread all over the world. So this is a great place. Uh, the, the footprint of D.L. Modi was here. So I am proud to be here and say the gospel should be uh, spontaneously spread out. Uh, that should be our great challenge. As I told you, what Wombran told me, what, what Wombran preached me, don't work for orphanage, don't work for uh, poor people, work for Jesus Christ. So uh, you, you're trying to carry that. Uh... So this is uh, here, Florence. You know, the pastor of Philadelphia Church was born in Romania the day when I landed in Romania. So that is amazing. And he is a pastor now and bishop of Romanian Philadelphia Pentecostal Church. So he is my patron. He is the head of my mission all over the world. And uh, he has invited and his, uh, uh, his church has a magazine. Uh, so that is run by Brother Tomato. And uh, he is also one of the board members and vice president. So because two great people are in Chicago, we all board members have decided to attend uh, his Philadelphia church and be here two, three days. That's why we all are here 
from Friday to Monday morning. So that gives a happiness to my Richard Wombran and Sabina Wombran if they are alive here. But I believe they are in spirit alive with Jesus Christ. They are watching and seeing what glorious days we have with him. Of course, he is not with us, but on this earth, we are glorifying God. Thank you so much. Uh, we're at the end of this segment. I'd like to um, invite you uh, to stand by because I'd like to talk about the future. You're not a young man anymore and you have a lot going on, a lot of responsibility and I'd like to know how you see the future. Just, future just, just give me one. Let's take a short break so yeah. you can take a, a deep breath and then we'll uh, be right back. Vom reveni după această scurtă pauză. Am revenit în studio împreună cu mine se află Dr. P.P. Job din India și în acest segment vom discuta despre viitorul acestei misiuni importante pe care o face Dr. P.P. Job în India. Um, the future is ahead. You're not a young man anymore. And uh, I'm sure that you have a vision about uh, what should be or how things should be uh, run. How do you feel about the future? What do you see? When Richard Wombrand came out, he was already 60 years old. And when he came to New Delhi, I asked his age. So that is the retirement age of India. 60 means retirement. That was the time we all started ministry with him. And he never thought about the future, but he died after 32 years. I worked with him 33 years. And uh, let me tell you, we never think about the future. God's work will be done in God's way by God's people on God's time. So I always wait for some people to come and people are coming, taking the responsibility. See, I am sitting in Chicago. And last week I was in Netherlands. Next week I will be in Switzerland and Germany preaching the gospel. And orphans are living there. Orphanage is going on. Two colleges are in running condition. One school is in running condition. We have a farm in Delhi, publication house, medical center. Of course, medical center is run by my wife. And office is there. So I am not involved on these material things. People who are called are already there. They are doing it. Only when they want my presence, then I will give an advice. That advice can be given at any time to these people by anybody. But the present situation, it is not being run by me, myself. It is by running, it is being run by God's people, called people selected people and uh, those who are not fit i will not send them out they will go automatically because they cannot be they cannot be there see you need a passion for everything if you you are a studio man if you don't have a passion for broadcasting this studio will be closed down so i always say people who have passion towards children orphans or publication or medical center i select and collect them. So they don't they should not look into the money matters or their future matters like that. They all should have a passion to their calling. See, I have a passion for all these things. That's why I am going on 
moving state to state nation to nation i am not bothered for anything jesus christ for him forever until the last breath so who will run after my life that is not my concern that is that should be the concern of jesus christ kingdom of god it is not our mission it you is are not human my being mission. you are human being after all and your body only can carry so much how yes. do you feel about don't you feel like you want to kind of take it easy or retire I don't, i don't feel any tension whenever i see that i cannot manage this i go and sleep <laughs> i go and that's, sleep. that's the way you do it yeah. and you can sleep with you yes, have no problem I can sleeping sleep. my wife used to tell me when people have problem they don't sleep exactly. they take a, 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 some sleeping pills and you go and sleep i can sleep any time because uh, it is not it is not my work i read a book about luther martin luther you know in germany this uh, this lutheran people wear black dress when somebody dies and when they go for funeral in some other countries also you will see so one day martin luther was sitting in in her, in his easy chair relaxing with a full of tension so his wife wore a black dress and came forward and martin luther asked who died today she said you are god <laughs> you are god then he began to think that is the day he said god if this church belongs to you you please look after that if this church does not belong to you why should i worry let me sleep <laughs> that is my uh, policy martin luther's policy that any work i do that belongs to jesus christ jesus if you want you look after that is not my work What's i am just a, like uh, you know i am my role is like a uh, you know you have seen train i am just a bogey one of the bogies of the train the rail is already fixed according to calvinism <laughs> that you cannot change it blueprint is there and you are pulled every day by holy spirit so you are on the rail already by the blueprint of our mighty god and you are one of the bogies bogies have no, bogies have no no capacity to say something they are pulled hmm it is pulled to chicago or it's pulled to uh, los angeles or new york rail is there engine is taking so i always say god help me to live every moment for thy glory for thy kingdom that is why i say i am not able to tell you what is the future future belongs to jesus christ looking back over the years uh, so many years so many experiences you you've had do you have any regrets is there no. anything you would change no regret that is the beauty of my life i lost to two children no regret they will be earlier in heaven before i reach if i go first i don't know whether they will reach there but now i can go to heaven with a full assurance they both are in heaven but that was not easy that when it happened how did you take that uh, experience uh, did you ever blame god no i wrote a book why god why because so many people ask me but i never ask god why god why because without knowing uh, without god's knowledge nothing happens in our life whatever happens it is for a purpose in the philippians in the bible paul's letter to philippians chapter 1 verse 12 says what has happened to me has happened for the furtherance of the gospel so whatever happened good or bad for people they may feel it is good or bad but for us everything happens for the furtherance of the gospel because when we are in this world many people with jealousy they want to kill us they will they want to finish us they want to demolish the orphanage 
they want to close down the orphanage even some of my enemies they brought a snake and threw it in my room can you imagine we had a convocation you came for one convocation the first convocation after the night 9 o'clock one of my board members wanted to go home tired i told him come we will give you a cup of tea so i and my forced him to come after us so our two room set i have in uh, in kombatu in the michael job center so i took him he sat in a chair and i was standing opposite to him my wife wanted to heat the water for, to make a cup of coffee for him i did not know 12 inches away one snake is standing near to me i did not see but that man who is sitting opposite to me saw the snake he was shocked he said don't move he came slowly and pulled me the other side then security came and killed the snake suppose he did not come there we don't see we never think there will be a snake there we i and my wife both will be bitten by the snake you will see only dead bodies in the morning even they may not see a snake in the room because the snake was hiding behind the curtain that is why we did not see we don't know whether uh, how long the snake was there but when i reached there the snake came slowly forward maybe to listen what is going on and uh, a snake with a cobra you know standing like this in hinduism we have seen shiva there is a god a god who is having a snake on the neck but let me tell you even a snake poisonous snake is stopped by god so if god wants god will stop if god wants to take my children okay you take so in the book of job he always says god gave me and god has taken theologically or historically they say satan came and taken away job's son no job's testimony in the book of job is god gave to me and god has taken so we should think not devil or anything without god nothing can be happen so my enemies i have so many enemies some wrote very very bad letters against me and uh, i am not worried you write whatever letter against me into the government of india many hindus wrote letters even christians wrote against me in america i am not bothered you write what what happened some people said oh i have seen a very bad letter against me okay go to hell <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel when you see uh things like that after all the the work that you've done uh and the good to see that see people uh, are not so called christians are not christians so for them if in their heart when they see other christian work they should have a bubbling heart otherwise it means they are not christians if you see uh Mary when she became pregnant went to see Elizabeth and she was little bit uh, afraid and troubled and all these things but when Mary told Elizabeth about how uh, Gabriel appeared to Mary and what happened and all these things the bible says the babe in the in the womb of Elizabeth began to uh began to jump leap leap for joy and elizabeth has written in the it is in the bible the 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 in the womb the 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 small child forming child began to leap so that means when somebody does a good work for jesus christ we should have a bubbling heart uh leaping heart for jesus christ if somebody forget denomination or uh, brother and denomination pentecostal you know any other thing forget any any individual if their heart is not bubbling for god for jesus christ 
they are not real christian they are duplicate christians is there such a thing is it possible that people go to church they pray they give and not really be truly they say as i told you they, i don't want to criticize anybody but they should feel do they do i get jealousy <laughs> when other do something good they should say whether they are christian or not i don't want to criticize anybody each individual should himself should think hey somebody is used by god praise god if they can say praise god they are not duplicate christian otherwise they made christians they try to be a christian but we don't need to be try christian but we are spontaneously christians what would you like to communicate to our viewers now at the end of our we're at the end of the program now and many of the viewers most of the viewers are romanians unless somebody else uh, is clicking through the channels um my opinion is uh, i had been in uh, uh radio uh, uh, so many places arad and all these places when romania got independence people are more uh, fighting each other <laughs> under chechesco they were threatened by chechesco now they are fighting each other my opinion is we all should be filled with the god's grace once we are filled with grace we are one in christ whatever it comes like david says i will stand alone i will stand alone if god is with me who is against me such a way all romanian christian should have a bubbling heart uh, inside for jesus christ that is my message for you thank you dr uh, pp job i'd like to uh, ask you if anyone wants to find out more about your ministry how they can do that you can go dr job submission org or you can write to me personally my email is job at pobox.com job at pobox.com my son made it john job john his name elder son was john so j job at pobox.com my website is www.jobsmission.org you can write to me personally i am happy every letter will have a reply Thank you very much. May God continue to bless your ministry, your family and uh, all the work that you do in India. Thank you. Thank you so much. Doamnelor și domnilor, aici punem punct emisiunii de astăzi. Vă mulțumim pentru atenția acordată și din nou, ca și la început, îmi cer scuze pentru cei care n-ați reușit să înțelegeți acest dialog și vă invităm să rămâneți alături de noi pe RTN pe acest canal. La revedere.